So today we'll discuss a strategy which is done by MFI, the Money Flow Index indicates and provides some decent results here in Walmart and Microsoft, Apple, the list just goes on, it's taking a while, HD. Yeah, so what I'm gonna do now is roughly um, gonna define what a money flow index is. So money flow index is like similar to RSI divergence indicator, but RSI generally tend to use the price. Uh, money flow index on the other hand, they tend to use the volume as well and that's one of the reasons why I like money flow index um, it's kind of like you know so underrated indicator I don't I rarely see people use it but it's for me it's one of those epiphany moments that indicator kind of like unlike other indicators because it uses the volume it gives us another uh, set of strategy inputs for a strategy which you can use for your uh, portfolio uh, so you can you can do basic things like RSI divergence kind of a situation the money flow index but we're going to do pretty simple we're going to do like a simple uh, quantitative based strategy uh, but anyways the takeaway of MFI is just similar to oscillator in RSI overbought and oversold but it takes volume into consideration instead of price so if you have uh, watched a video of our RSI pine script divergence strategy uh, it's pretty good you know it's been working very well recently uh, in the crash as well he's a bull uh, buy signal right there and then another buy signal right there so that video is available on our YouTube channel so you can do the same thing for MFI as well if you fancy so this is on an intraday time frame so again here uh, there's a buy signal the market went up here again there's a buy signal market went up uh, here again there's two buy signals the market uh, went up as well so this is on a one hour chart so if you want to check out that video I'll leave it on the description but it's it's on our channel so you just can download the code for this uh, RSI divergence indicator so um, so let's start coding so what I want you guys to do is I want you guys to click on open and then strategy and then just create a it'll pop up a, a blank default strategy so just delete everything off we're gonna do this on version 4 or version 5 it doesn't really matter but I think we'll, we'll, we'll try version we'll try version 5 here so all we need to do is we just need to add version equals 5 so that sets that our code will be on version 5. So I'm going to go strategy and then MFI. I'm just going to call it YouTube. Uh, MFI YouTube and overlay equals true. So if in case you want to plot something, uh, it will appear on the chart. It's a spelling mistake there. Then we need to do, we need to declare the values of uh, MFI. So, the, so in version 5, it's basically TA.MFI. And then uh, we need to declare the series and the length. So we're going to have close and then we're going to have a number 14. So I'll come into detail of that in a bit. So we're going to store that into a variable. Let's call it X. So now the MFI values are stored into X. Uh, now we'll do the entry condition. So if um, X is less than 50 and close is greater than SMA, close comma 200 then tab strategy dot long strategy dot entry so this entire code is available on the description so if you guys want to check it out just click on that link and you can download it um, if you have any errors in your code but otherwise you can just code along uh, while you watch the video so strategy dot long again not best day for making spelling mistakes um, so basically you see these values 50 200 so you see the SMA so it should be TA dot SMA because it's version 5 so in version 4 it's just normal SMA um, so you know these values 50 200 14 um, I've come up with these values through a process called optimization so basically I'm like trying at 49 48 47 46 um, 200 198 like lots of numbers uh, even 14, 13, 12, and to try and see which one gives me the best uh, results. Uh, so that's what's called optimization is. Um, YouTube does the same thing as well. So they they kind of give you some recommendations of some videos and then whether you click on it. So if you click on it, then the YouTube knows that, okay, uh, our optimization is kind of correct. So better recommend these kind of stuff more. Uh, so that's what optimization is. And in, in quantitative industry, in quantitative trading industry, this is widely used and it is really, really helpful to take your 
uh, trading to the next step. This is where retail traders kind of lack the whole optimization. So optimization is just not enough. You also need to do forward testing. Uh, so forward testing is basically taking these optimized results and checking it on data which the optimization was not tested on. Uh, so the way we, do, the way we do the optimization is called training data and where we check the optimized values is called testing data. So we need to have some kind of similarities on it. So that's what we teach in our course if you guys want to check it out. Uh, so there are like 10 strategies we teach about the optimization and walk forward analysis and the Monte Carlo simulation as well. So we'll discuss the Monte Carlo simulation at the, almost the end of the video. So watch it thoroughly. Uh, feel free to visit our website. So going back to the code. So now we need an exit condition. So I'm just going to do a 3 to 1 exit condition. So SL equals 0 0.10 and take profit equals 0 0.30. So this again can be optimized as well. This is just a 3 is to 1. You can try 3.5 is to 1. You can try 2.5 is to 1. You can try 4 is to 1. It all depends on what you want and what the optimization tells me. So there are better values than all of these values, but I'm just giving you this template so that you can work on it to optimize the values. For the students who have already done the course, optimize all these values to find the ideal fit for this strategy. So I'm going to do the long stop and um, take profit conditions. Position average price. Asterisk. The cool thing that has happened in PineScript now because it kind of recommends what they're expecting. One minus SL and then long profit equals again strategy dot dot position average price asterisk one plus take profit. So we decided I take profit and stop loss and then if g dot position underscore size so if we are in a position we want the stop loss to be executed so if the strategy is in a position uh, so it will be one so obviously one is greater than zero and then we want to declare the exit condition the strategy dot exit ID equals close. So the reason why I'm giving ID equals close is that it gets displayed on the chart so we know when they're exiting the position. Uh, so the stop will be stop equals long stop and then limit or the take profit. We're going to set it to limit profit. Um, oh, it's actually long profit. Long profit. So I think so far everything is sorted. Um hopefully there is no errors. So I'm just gonna save this now. Um okay, so that should be alright. So I'm just gonna add this to the chart. Start from the Walmart situation. Um so the first thing you need to do is you need to change the settings. Uh so what's happened is that by default, uh, TradingView has set it to one contract, and there's nothing wrong with one contract, but one contract results is uh, compared to the initial capital of $1 million. So you could possibly make 100% return on a single trade. So you could have like $10 invested, it could be $20. So you basically made 100% return, uh, but that $100 is compared to 1 million, which is like 0.001% return or something. So that's why the returns uh, is like, uh, quite wrong or proper wrong. So what we need to do is we need to change this to 100% equity. So this can be anything. Don't look at the final net profit. Just look at the percentage number. So even if it is 1 million or 100,000, it's not going to make much of a difference. So if you can see here, the percentage numbers never change. The percentage numbers will almost be the same except for some rounding of numbers. Never look at the final value. So even if I put this to 10,000, the percentage numbers will almost be similar or exact. Um, so that's on Walmart and then we've got Microsoft. So you can see the drawdowns are quite higher and we'll come down to that discussion in a bit. Drawdowns are extremely high, which is one of the biggest red flags here. But people who have done this course, you know how to um, tweak the strategy to reduce the drawdowns. Uh, but regardless, one of the things that I like to do personally is to do Monte Carlo simulation. So people who have so our students know how to do a Monte Carlo simulation, but I'll give a rough idea on how a Monte Carlo simulation is done. So this is an excerpt in our course, in one of the Monte Carlo analysis we have done. So you can see the drawdown has been limited to nine point, somewhere between two to 9%. Uh, 
Uh, so this is Monte Carlo simulation, which is basically done even by nuclear scientists in the nuclear uh, facilities because they can't do lots of tests. So they do this mathematical test where they randomly uh, arrange sequence. So in for our case, we're randomly arranging the traits and trying to have see lots of combinations and permutations to see what our final outcome could be. So in this strategy, which we did in our course, what we did is we did 90 positions. Uh, so there will be 90 positions. Each position will be allocated 1% of our capital as risk and 10% is allocated to cash. So you can see because of that portfolio diversification by taking 90 positions, we were able to reduce the drawdown to less than 9%. And even the annual return is staying between 10 and 11%. So the more positions you have, the lesser the variance of the annual return and more minimal the drawdowns will be. Now, I'll give you another example. So this is another strategy um, which we did in our course as well. So in this one, we have taken 25 positions instead of 90 positions, only 25 positions uh, with 4% allocated capital on each position. So 25 into 4, that's 100% allocated uh, of our capital. But each position, only 4% uh, of our risk is allowed. And you can see the drawdown has gone higher. So. When you see this 1%, 5%, 10%, this is like the percentile. There's like less than 99% chance that you will have a drawdown of 44%. So there is less than 1% chance that the uh, drawdowns will be less than 8%. So this is what the Monte Carlo simulation tells us. It tells us like what are the ideal chances of the bad things to happen. So the biggest takeaway from this two comparisons, the reason why I want to compare both of these is that the one with the higher position, they have... 90 positions, they have less amount of drawdowns as compared to the one with just 25 positions. You see these returns here, the annual returns, 9%, 11% max and roll. This can be improved even better with optimizations so of these strategies here for the Monte Carlo simulation. I've not optimized the inputs. So if you can in improve those inputs by optimizing, you can get a bigger annual return and even more minimal drawdown. So um, there are ways of optimizing the drawdowns and the results as well. So you can choose what you want. So one of the things that we do is another thing we do is a CAGR to drawdown. So that's cumulative annual growth rate per drawdown. So so we're going to make that number as efficient as possible. So higher CAGR uh, to a maximum drawdown means your strategy is more effective. That means that you're getting bigger reward for less amount of drawdowns. Um, but on the other hand, the lower one means that you're getting lower CAGR to higher uh, amount of drawdown. So you're taking too much risk for getting lower return. So those are some of the things that we discuss in our strategy as well. So there, there are lots of uh, permutations and combinations that you can try out in quantitative space. Uh, so I'm just roughly giving you an idea on how some of the things you can come up with. So what I'm essentially trying to say is that the more you diversify your portfolio, so just not investing in one stock by giving it to maximum stocks possible, going into uh, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, the more you go when you're crossing like 50, 60, 70, your portfolio will be smoother. There won't be like a lot of variance on the annual return or on the drawdown. The drawdown starts to go down more and more less. So you tend to have more of a smoother heart rate. Uh, you won't get like a heart attack or an anxiety attack or any kind of a bad situation. So even this year, because my portfolio is so diversified um, with many positions, not only in strategies, but also in, in the number of positions and also the time frames used, uh, the equity curve is more smoother and my drawdowns is very limited. So when people are looking at 20, 30, 40% drawdowns, I'm having single digit drawdowns this year just because of my diversification and the amount of strategies that I keep on doing. So you can see all these things, like you can see um, JP Morgan is one of the stocks that didn't perform that well. So you'll always come across stocks where the strategies don't perform that well, but there'll also be stocks where it performed extremely well as well. So you saw the Nvidia and JNJ and Netflix and all those INTC, Intel Corporation there, Google. So another tip is that when you create any strategy, it doesn't matter what it is, it can be an MFI, an RSI, or whatever it is, the first thing you want to do is you want to check it on SPY and QQQ. Because you've got to remember, SPY is essentially 500 stocks, S&P 500. So it's basically mimicking a portfolio of 500 stocks. So if it works in uh, SPY, then generally it tends to work in most of the stocks. So even in this one, you can see the drawdown is so minimal, it's just 23%, because SPY is essentially a basket. Or 500 stocks so that's why the drawdown has come back as compared to let's say Walmart the drawdown is like super high but when you do it on SPY 
The returns have gone down substantially, but so has the drawdowns. The drawdowns, is, this is like a trade-off that you're going to do. So um, my goal for any strategy is to diversify as much as possible to get as much positions as possible. So there's SPY and here's QQQ as well. Uh, QQQ is NASDAQ 100 stocks again did pretty well drawdowns is minimal to 32%. So just the takeaway is to optimize your values, do the forward testing and do thorough Monte Carlo simulations. So for our students, you know, I'm giving out lots of free strategies uh, on our YouTube channel, but also quality strategies on our course. But whatever strategy you come up with, make sure you do the Monte Carlo simulations. For me, Monte Carlo simulation is up there, like the number one thing that I do before I give green signal to any strategies. The Monte Carlo simulation is probably for me the number one rank and the number two rank will be forward testing and then comes optimization and the last comes back testing. Most people just do the back testing and go straight into the strategy but like you have missed like three of the most important steps. So anyways if you want to learn all of these Monte Carlo simulation, optimization, forward testing, check out of course. Um, let me know uh, how this strategy goes. So the code is available in the description. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great day.